So again, here we are talking about reading with Bookshare and Voice Dream Reader. My name is Laura Ronberg and I work um, at Benetech, which runs Bookshare. I am going to be providing an overview of Bookshare. And then after that, we have Winston Chen from Voice Dream, who will talk about Voice Dream and give a demonstration. And then we will have some time to take your questions and answers about Bookshare and about the Voice Dream tool. Okay, so the problem is, you know, reading is fundamental to learning. Uh, it's crucial for students to be able to um, ingest the content that they need to get through school. Um, unfortunately, though, many students need reading materials in formats other than standard print. Many schools have gone towards digital curriculums with ebooks, but ebooks have the same limitations often that um, hard copy printed materials do. They may not be accessible to students who need reading materials in alternative formats. Uh, in the past, sometimes teachers have done everything from recording themselves reading a book at night and giving you know, a tape, <laughs> the tape to the student or scanning pages uh, to make, put it on the computer. Uh, teachers have no time to do that um, and they shouldn't have to. Uh, and especially now in this environment where so much of education is virtual, uh, they, there's really no need um, or time to do that. They need an easy way to give their students who need books and alternate formats uh, a really easy way so the students can read in ways that work for them. And this is where Bookshare comes in. So Bookshare is an ebook library for people with reading barriers such as dyslexia, visual impairments, or a physical disability. Bookshare offers the ability to listen to books out loud, to follow along with the audio and highlighted text. Uh, maybe a student just needs text in larger font, or maybe they need a braille format or some other file format that they use with an assistive technology device. So Bookshare offers books um, in ways that work for students of a variety of needs. There are over 923,000 titles in the library. These include textbooks, books for other assigned and pleasure reading, books for upskilling. Uh, we have all the study guides for SATs, GEDs, um, LSATs driver's license manuals for uh, the driver's ed courses in every state, um, books for anyone wanting to learn a new skill. It's a large, large um, collection that also includes newspapers and magazines. Uh, we are constantly adding new titles to uh, our collection, a couple thousand a month. So um, right now it's a little bit over 923,000 and that number will change next week. Uh, we get books often as soon as they're published, and we also add books to the collection that our members request. Bookshare is free for qualified U.S. students of any age. That's pre-K, K-12, post-secondary, adult education, and vocational education programs. Um, that's thanks to our funding from the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs. Uh, for people who are not students but who meet the qualifications, it is $50 a year for unlimited access. And in a little bit, we'll go over what the qualifications are. And in addition to offering all these titles, um, there are many, many ways to read the books and customize it to fit the needs of the individual. You can read Bookshare books on Chromebooks and computers. Uh, we provide a very basic web reader where the, fi the book file just opens in the computer. There's no downloading. Uh, the book opens and it has the audio and the highlighted um, text-to-speech. Uh, that can also be enhanced with some other products like such as the Read and Write or Snap and Read extensions. There's a tool called Capti Voice. Um, and also, all of our books can be downloaded as a Microsoft Word document. So just like any other Word document, you can download the book in a Word document, copy and paste. If you just need like, one chapter of a book, you can copy and paste it. Of course, you would need a tool that uh, screen reader to read it out loud. But for instance, say a student just needs larger font, a very large font, you could just download it in a Word format. So it's a really easy way, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. 
There's also a variety of great um, apps for mobile devices, for iPads and iPhones and Android devices. And in a little bit, we'll be hearing about the wonderful tool Voice Dream Reader, which um, our members just love, which is available for both iOS and Android devices. But as you can see, there's a variety of reading options. Bookshare offers two main account types. What we call our organizational account is the type of account that a teacher or a school would create. So the educator creates the account and then adds their students. Um, we call our students members and the educators are called sponsors in our system. They add the students who qualify and assign books to them. Um, students, so on these organizational accounts that the teachers have added the students to, students log in, find the books they want to read, and then read them on the device of their choice. Now students can only open books that have been assigned to them by their teachers when they're on, they're just only on their school account. We also offer the individual membership account where once the student is on the school account, um, either the teacher or the parent can initiate the individual membership, uh, which is also free for the student. Uh, the, the parent signs off on it, and that way the student can read any book in the Bookshare collection. So it's a really great way to encourage students to read more. They can read the books that they want to read. Um, often these are students who have struggled with reading. They probably do not like it, um, but if they can read books other than just what they have to read for school, um, it might really you know, encourage them to really love to learn, um, learn to love to read and read a lot more, which of course will improve their reading skills. Uh, the parent doesn't have to provide any further proof of the disability since the student is already on the school account that's already been taken care of at the school level. Uh, so it's a really easy process. Um, that way the student then can find and read any book in the collection in addition to the ones the teacher assigns. Now, if someone is not a student, um, you know, such an adult that meets our qualifications, you can sign up for the individual account. You do have to provide um, a, a proof of disability form, which is a form that you download when you create your account, and then it needs to be signed off by um, a professional um, if you're if you have a visual impairment, you know, your ophthalmologist could sign it. Anyone that has knowledge of um, one of the disability criteria to, um, to qualify for Bookshare. But again, if it's, if it's a student who's already on a school account, there's no further proof of disability that needs to be provided. So who qualifies? Um, Bookshare operates under copyright law, not special education law. So it's um, a little bit different in, um, in, in the qualifications. The copyright, the copyright law states that an eligible person is one who is blind or has a visual impairment or perceptual or reading disability or a physical disability that renders them unable to read printed works to substantially the same degree as a person without the impairment or disability. So the language here on this slide is uh, exactly uh, as it is stated in the law. So again, it does not offer, it does not mention specific diagnoses. It does not mention, uh, mention that a, for a visual impairment, it has to be you know, a certain um, you know, number. Uh, it's just any of these conditions that makes it substantially uh, render, you know, they're not able to read comprehend, interact with the printed text the way someone without this impairment. The law further states that this disability is determined by a competent authority who is a professional who has experience in making these determinations. Now that can be a um, special education teacher, an assistive technology specialist, um, again, you know, a doctor, an ophthalmologist, a, a occupational therapist, a literacy coach, Anyone that has worked with a student, um, there's been an evaluation of the student, it's been determined that the student, um, like a reading accommodation such as text-to-speech would help them read, um, read closer to grade level, then that, uh, that qualifies for Bookshare. So again, since it is under copyright law, the student does not need to have an IEP or be on a 504 plan. Um, Many, many of our members uh, are, do have an IEP or on a 504, but that is not required. 
nor does having one of those plans make you eligible for Bookshare in of themselves. There are a lot of students with IEPs who would not qualify for Bookshare. So again, it's the, the professional who's worked with the student, who has seen an evaluation of the student, and can, and can attest that, yes, the student, uh, an accommodation such as text-to-speech or uh, more accessible materials would benefit them and help them with their reading. That, um, that's good. That's what we require. That's good enough for us. And um, you can add that student to your account. Uh, if the student or person is already a member of Learning Ally or the National Library Service, that also serves as a basis of qualification. So even say the student is already using Learning Ally, another ebook li audio uh, library, again, that's just another sign that they would also be eligible for Bookshare. It's really easy to get started. Teachers create the account or get added to an account that might already exist at their school. They add their qualified students. They assign books and it's really easy. You can assign one book at a time or create a reading list of books to assign to the student. Uh, students, when they're added to the account, you give them a username and password. They then log in on the device that they're using. They see the list of books that have been assigned and, and I'll demonstrate and I'll show you what this looks like. Find their books and then they read um, in the tool of their choice. So it's really simple. And with that, I'm going to show you what that looks like to assign a book and then what it looks like on the student's end to find their book. So I have logged in as a teacher and I hope you all can see my screen. And when you log in, uh, you're on your My Bookshare page, which sort of it serves as your dashboard. It's where you add members, add um, other sponsors, other educators, um, you can add them to the account and the account can have as many members, as many students and as many sponsors as you wish. So I'll click on the members link and see I have my list of students here. To add a member, you just select that add member button and fill in the information about the student. So the information that we require is just name, birth date and grade. You then assign a username and password, and that username can be anything. It can be an email address, it can be a nickname, it could be a student ID number, uh, and then you assign a password, and we recommend writing that down because, you know, as we all have passwords for so many different sites, they're hard to keep track of, and especially for younger students, they might not be able to, uh, to remember. And then here under the qualifying information, this is the only, um, you know, we don't require that you send us any documentation about each student. When you're adding the member, you click whether they have a visual, a learning, or a physical disability. And by selecting one of those, you are attesting that you, know, you, you have knowledge of the student and you attest that they qualify. Uh, if they have an IEP or a 504, we ask that you select that. That's just for reporting purposes. Um, and also if a student has an IEP, they have access to a, a small subset of the collection of textbooks that um, are in the National Instructional Material Access Center that students with IEPs do not have access to. So if they do have the IEP, please note that, but again, not, not required. Um, you hit save and then that student is added to your roster. So if you want to assign a book to a student, it's really easy. Um, you can, on every page on the website, there's just a search bar at the top. You can search by title, author, or ISBN. There's also an advanced search where you can really narrow the search. Uh, say you're only looking for books that contain images that are for you know, ninth grade reading level about animals. So there's a ways to really filter the search to, if you're looking for something specific. We also offer the browse page. And these are collections that Bookshare has put together. Um, these include uh, the New York Times bestsellers for children and adults. And every time the New York Times updates their, their bestsellers list, we update it in our system. We also have categories, kids, teens, teachers, adults, the award winners. Um, under the, the teachers collection, we have books 
organized by lexile level, uh, a variety of leveled readers from some of the major um, companies that produce the level, leveled readers, Fountains and Pinnell, Accelerated Reader, Scholastic Reading Guides. So we have those and then categorized by uh, their score. So say I want to assign a book from this, this list to my student, find this title, I just select this assign button. Then it brings up the list of members. I can assign it to all my members. I can assign it to you know, two, three, uh, whatever you want. You click that assign button. The book is assigned and within you know, seconds, the student will have access to that. So it's important that when you assign a book to the student that you tell them that you have because they, they do not get a notification or any um, other indication that the book has been assigned. So you, that's what you would need to, to tell them that you have assigned the book to them. Now I'm going to go to the student screen to show you what it looks like on their end. Okay, here I am logged in as one of my fictional students. They also have their My Bookshare page. Um, so not a lot, basically gives them, it shows the hit their book history, any reading lists um, that the teacher has created for them, and account information. So here is a list of books. So what I just did by selecting that Assign button is what we call an Assign Books. So here's all the list of books that have been assigned to the student. And here's this fancy Nancy at the museum that I just assigned a couple seconds ago. I also mentioned we have a feature called reading lists. And we're not going to go into that today. Um, we have information on our website. And I also can send out a link to everybody. Um, we did a, a more comprehensive Bookshare 101 webinar last week that goes into reading lists. But basically, it's you select several books at once, and you create a list. And then that student would see that under their reading list tab. So you see it's like a collection, a collection of books. So I just assigned. This book to my student. I've notified them. They log in with the username and password that you've provided. They see their books. And if they wanted to read it on their computer, they would click read now. If they wanted to actually download the file, say they just wanted the mp3 of a file of the book, they're going to download the mp3 and put it on their phone and listen with their headphones while they're in the car. They can download just the mp3 format. Or if a student is using a uh, Braille display, they would download the BRF. Uh, also, if they just want the Word document. So they have a choice of how they want to read it. Um, if they're going to read it on a mobile app, such as VoiceStream, which we're about to get the great demo of, uh, there's no need to download. This, they would just come to the site to look at, the, find the titles that have been assigned to them. Then when they log into the app, on um, whatever app they're using, on whatever devi other device, they would search for that title and find the book. So this is where it's really important that you tell them that you've assigned books to them and that they know where to go to look for these books so they see the titles and then can, can search for them. So that's kind of a quick overview. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A box and I'm happy to answer. Um, but with that, I will go back to, um, I will turn it over to Winston, who is going to now provide, show the overview of Voice Dream Reader and all the great features it has to offer. Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Uh, if you can, just uh, uh, send a text. Yep, I can hear you. Sounds great. Okay, wonderful. Okay, um, I am going to just show you a single slide to tell you a little bit about um, Voice Dream Reader and the company. Um, we have been around since 2012. 
Uh, in fact, the first version of Voice Stream Reader was released in the App Store um, in, in 2000, February 2012. Uh, since then, we have uh, got quite a bit of uh, accolades from the industry. Uh, for example, in Forbes, uh, one of the writers said, this is the single best education find in my entire career. Um, Apple App Store regularly features Voice Stream Reader, uh, including Best New App, App of the Day, our favorites. And in fact, uh, just uh, a co couple of months ago, um, it was featured in, uh, in the Today Story. Um, it has the best um, ratings, uh, 4.6 stars in the App Store of all the, any of the tools um, that uh, can be used uh, where that provides text-to-speech capabilities. Um, Jacob Balatin Award from the National Federation for the Blind. Um, uh, other recipients of the awards include uh, things like Apple and, and Ray Kurzweil. Um, so, um, um, so the long history and as well as constant improvement over the last eight years. Um, I'm going to now switch over and dive into the demo. So what I'm going to show you is um, the, a simulator. Um, so this is basically voice stream reader um, running in a development environment on, on the Mac. Um, so um, what you see here is, um, is called the library. So this is where um, all of your books and other files are, are stored. Uh, you can organize your books into folders. Uh, so here are organized by uh, subjects uh, for, for a school. Um, you can also um, filter it by source um, and flagging things. There is also a reading list here. It's different from uh, the Bookshare reading list. So this is a list of, of books that you or articles you want to read in a sequential way. Um, so here and also there are ways you can sort it. Um, you can look at it in the, in the list as opposed to, to, a, to, to a grid. Um, so lots of ways to, to manage your, your library. So um, of course, um, when you install the app, it comes with a, some, a basic book, but you need to add your own content into it. And this is the, and then you do that from this plus button. Uh, notice that these are, uh, there are lots of ways to add content uh, into Voice Stream Reader. Um, besides Bookshare books, uh, you can add PDF documents, or Word documents, um, other ebooks uh, that you have in EPUB format, um, or articles from the web. Um, there's a Safari extension uh, that you can use to save a Safari article, a, a, a web article, into your, uh, your voice stream library. Um, so since we're, we're, we're doing Bookshare, so let's add a book from, from Bookshare. Um, you click on that, and here is um, an interface in terms of content not too different from uh, what you saw Lara uh, demonstrated uh, on the website. So uh, here are the popular books. Um, most people, however, search for a book using this search command. And you can search by title, author, and, and so on. Um, a question that's often asked is that the reading list, uh, the Bookshare reading list, that is not available here yet, but it will be soon. Um, so for now, when students need to read a book, um, they can just do a search for the title of the book from here. Um, so from here, let me just go to popular. Um, by the way, a new feature that was recently added was uh, is Goodreads. So you can uh, you can look at uh, Goodreads uh, ratings from here, um, and you can download directly into your Voice Dreamer library. Oops, a second. Okay. So here it is, and then we can just open it. Uh, somebody asked the question that there is a lot of uh, sort of legalese in in front in each Bookshare book, and I I, I took a guess at it that that legalese probably needs to be there by law. 
Um, but in VoiceStream, you directly see it skips that and it goes directly to the table of content. Uh, you can also uh, start reading using this um, list here, the list of headings. So notice that each chapter is here. So if you want to go to any chapter, usually it's chapter one. Uh, just click on click there, and you you're brought to uh, to that chapter. Um, to read um, to start reading, just double tap uh, and on the word that you want to start reading from, and it would start reading. Um, so, so that's so that's reading um, fairly straightforward. Um, when you when you're here, um, you can also use light or dark mode. For right now, uh, we're using the dark mode on, on the iPad um, to switch mode. Uh, so this is what the um, what the light mode looks like. Um, and as far as colors go, of course, you can configure that to. Um, to a lot of detail. You can change background, highlight, selection, and so on. Just about every, every aspect of the UI can be changed. Um, you can change uh, here from audio setting. Uh, you can change the speed. Right now it's at 180 words per minute, which is sort of um, the, the, the average normal um, human reading speed. Um, you can change the voice. Um, iOS actually comes with quite a few good sounding text to speech voices. Um, but when you purchase Voice Dream Reader, you get to choose a, uh, a premium voice from, uh, from a company called Acapella. So right now you're hearing an Acapella voice, uh, Sharon, which, which, which is one of our users' favorite voices. Uh, but if you're unhappy with any of those voices, then there are lots of voices that you can buy uh, through uh, uh, these are in app purchases. Um, you can search. Um, so we can search for um, Harry. Uh, so then you can find, um, uh, you can go to that section. Um, you can also scroll ahead. You can scroll anywhere in the document, even while it's reading. Um, but to go back to where you were, um, you would just tap with, with two fingers and that'll synchronize the audio and the, and, and the text. Um, if you tap once, then there's a full screen mode. Um, in, in full screen mode, um, Again, double tap somewhere to stop reading. Um, in full screen mode, there are lots of commands that you can do with two fingers. So for example, two fingers to increase or decrease speed by moving up and down, or um, to rewind and fast forward using two fingers swiping left or, uh, or, or swiping right. Um, it has a lot of studying tools. Um, so for example, you can select um, a, a section of text and you can, um, you, you, you can annotate, you can add a note. Okay. This is my note and save that. And then one of the nice features is that um, you can export all your notes. You can export all, all your highlights. Uh, into a file, you can bring that into Microsoft Word, for example, so that you can write your term paper. Um, VoiceStream was is designed for um, exactly the same set of users um, that 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 would you, that would find Bookshare beneficial. So that is, you know, people, um, students with dyslexia, um, students who have uh, visual impairment. So I'm going to demonstrate a few features that are uh, specifically uh, designed for, uh, for for these users. Um, with dyslexia, um, visual uh, appearance that is important. Like I mentioned, uh, you can set colors. Um, oftentimes, um, a, a someone with dyslexia will find a particular combination of colors to be the easiest on their eyes. So it's a matter of, of, of trying different colors until, until the student says, okay, now that, that looks really good to me. 
Um, spacing is extremely important according to research. Um, so how you space characters, how much you, how you space lines, as well as side margins. Um, so you can increase the side margins so that um, so that the length of each line is um, is is small. Um, so this way that your your eye your eyes have less distance to travel when you reach the end of one line and you have to go to the next. Um, font is also really important uh, when it comes to to people with dyslexia. So VoiceStream actually comes with two um, dyslexic specific. Uh, fonts. One is dyslexia, the other one is open dyslexic. Um, and users have found that these fonts um, are, are helpful uh, in terms of reading clarity. Um, so again, uh, here, the, the, the idea is that by giving the um, teacher or assistive technology consultant or the student, him or herself, a lot of controls, um, you're able to find just the right setting uh, for the most comfortable way to read and, the, and, and, and also the most effective way to read. Um, one feature that's particularly useful for um, people with, with dyslexia is, um, uh, is to center the, uh, the speech cursor. So for example, uh, let, me, let me go to here. Um, so right now, um, the page does not move and as, as speech travels down the page. When it reaches the end of the page, then the page will, then it will, you, you will go to the next page. Uh, alternatively, you can always have the text um, centered in the middle so that, so that it scrolls every line. And, um, in addition to that, there is a way to, uh, to reduce the number of lines uh, on the screen. So right now you were showing uh, all the lines that can fit on the screen. So we can say, let's have a, let's show three lines. Um, and then if you go to um, the, the full screen mode, so, right, so here's a very, uh, here's a distraction free environment. And I can start reading using two fingers. Um, and user feed, feedback for this mode has been very good and, and a lot of students do find this very useful. Um, so moving on to some other features, um, for younger readers, sometimes um, you might find it helpful to stop reading at the end of the sentence and then you have to uh, push play again to start, to start reading the next sentence. So this way, in this way you can read um, a book Sentence, one sentence at a time, so that um, uh, this young, young reader can fully digest the sentence. Um, there's another feature called finger reading. And so this is when you, you can move um, a finger under the word Right. So this is a lot like when a parent will read a book for a child by, you know, pointing at the word. Here, the, ch the child can read by himself or herself by simply tapping on the screen and then moving the finger along the text and have each word read, read, read out loud. Um, a lot of people, believe it or not, use voice stream reader to speed read. And this is particularly important for uh, college students were um, high school students later in later grades who have a lot of reading to do. Um, one, one little known fact is that um, with very with just a little bit of training, almost everyone, including uh, people with dyslexia, can read at the tw at twice the speed by voice than a normal person can read by sight. So, so let, let me repeat that. It's actually an extraordinary fact. And, and I was involved in a research project at MIT that, 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 made, that drew the conclusion is that with a little bit of training, everybody can read twice as fast. Um, and, that, and that in voice stream reader, it simply involves turning up the, the speed gradually until you reach a point where you can still comprehend. And, and, and with voice and and visuals combined, um, 
people can do this, and most of our test subjects found that most, most people can do this with no loss of comprehension. Um, so this is a, a, a useful feature. So a lot, lot of people who, uh, who use Voice Stream Reader do, do take advantage of this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on to features important for uh, people with low vision. Uh, so typically with people with low vision, contrast is important. So in that case, um, usually a um, um, white text on a, on a black background um, is, uh, is, is really useful. Um, so here we can choose a font, for example, let's go to um, Open Sans. Uh, you can also use a bold uh, uh, font, which means it's a little bigger. Um, let's turn the text all the way up. Okay, so here we have just uh, very few, very few lines visible. Um, we can also, um, uh, for scrolling, we can also do it to scroll by page. Okay. So now this becomes um, similar to a normal uh, regular ebook reader. And we can scroll one page at a time. And you can see that the text is, is, is very large. A lot of low vision people, um, users of VoiceStream, they tend to switch back and forth between visually reading large text like this and, and using text to speech. And that's very easy. You can scroll and read that like this visually. And when your eyes get tired, just double tap and you can start, oh, I'm, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the finger reading mode. Uh, I'll change that back. Okay, and just start reading. Right, so it's easy to switch back and forth between pure visual and, uh, and combined uh, audio, combined audio and, uh, and visual. Um, for, for, for blind users, um, actually there are a lot of features that are built into VoiceStream. I can't demonstrate this because uh, I can't, for in, in the simulator, um, there's no voiceover. Um, but the, the, the product is carefully designed so that um, voiceover users have, has an optimal experience. So for example, um, when voiceover is turned on, the user interface uh, that is the uh, the buttons uh, on the screen changes. Um, in fact, the order of the buttons is such that um, the the voiceover user ne never has to swipe too much to find the right control. Usually, the control that you need is the first control that the highlight is on. Um, a lot of um, blind users also uh, like to use the Braille, so VoiceStream Reader um, works well with a um, with with a, um, a refreshable Braille display, um, and again, and it allows through this multimodal reading where you can switch around between hearing the text and um, feeling and using the the Braille display to to read and switching back and forth between the two modes. Right, um, so that's that sort of wraps up. I know it's very quick. Um, there are a lot of lot more features um, uh, that you can explore. So these are the basics, right? Getting content into the library and um, um, and and how to sort of change all the settings. Some of them may seem may seem too much. For example, when I when I first um, when, when I first got it, read an email from a customer who said. I would like to change the pitch of the voices, and I thought, well, how can I? I, I don't know. I don't know how that could be useful, but um, for people with certain hearing uh, difficulties, um, the pitch can actually makes a big difference in terms of reading comfort. Um, so you can change the pitch um, of, of each text-to-speech voice. You can also change the length of the pause at the end of each sentence. So again, depending on the person, the speed at which the person can digest uh, spoken, spoken words, you might want to lengthen that uh, to give the person a little while for the brain to catch up. Um, the last thing I want to I show you um, is uh, is OCR. So uh, I know now we um, we are we're, you know most students are are, are in remote learning mode. Um, a good thing about that is that now um, um, the schools have no choice but to um, scan in uh, worksheets and so on into electronic form and and, and sending those to students in PDF documents typically. 
Um, however, a lot of those PDF documents may not be accessible in the sense that they're just images and there's no text information associated with them. So um, let me give you an example here. I've got it in Google Drive. Um, I have a, a, um, a, a reading assignment that was sent to me called Positive Psychology, the scan from it from a textbook. So I'm gonna download this from, from Google Drive and uh, I'm gonna open it and looks like it's, this is a PDF document. Okay, obviously this looks like a scan. And VoiceStream recognizes that and it says this document appears to be a scan. Would you like to perform OCR on it? And I say proceed. And it goes through and OCRs of the 18 pages uh, in this document. Um, it's actually faster, believe it or not, on a device than, than uh, on a computer. Okay, so now it's been OCR'd and I can press play. So, so that's how OCR works. Um, very fat and very fast and, and, and very, uh, very accurate. And by the way, in order to have the OCR feature, um, voice stream scanner uh, needs to be present on the device. So you do need both uh, voice stream reader and voice stream scanner. And voice stream scanner also gives you a standalone document scanner with OCR and text-to-speech built in so that if you have something short that you want to read, you can just scan it and play and uh, no need to, to have that document show up and take up space in your library. Um, so that's um, so that's it for the for the demo. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about per, uh, cost. So Voice Stream Reader is um, fifteen dollars uh, per download, and that is not a subscription. That is a one-time price, and um, and, and uh, you would have the app for for eternity with uh, with 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 that cost. Um, educational institutions uh, get get a volume discount, and again, this the volume discount is available through Apple uh, App Store. Uh, when you buy more than twenty, when you buy twenty or more um, copies of the software, you get fifty percent off. So, um, so if, for twenty, it basically costs the same as um, as as ten as ten copies. And again, all of that uh, you can uh, qualify for and uh, and uh, apply uh, through through Apple App Store. Um, so that's um, I think that's all from me. Um, can you, uh, Winston, can you do a demo of um, someone said they wanted to hear the sound? I think you have to share the audio as well. Oh yes, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but last time we te we we tested this and I think we, we got it to work. Um, yeah, it should work. Right. Okay. So such great see. voices. It would be nice for people to hear. Yes, of course. Um, share computer sound. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so let me let's go to uh, let's go to Harry Potter. Uh, maybe uh, make the text a little smaller. Um, let's go to chapter one. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number Four Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. Did, did everybody hear that? Yes, I heard it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so so that's so that's uh, that is Sharon, um, and that's one of the pre premium voices that come for free um, with uh, with uh, with the purchase of an app. And and like I said, there's a lot of there are a lot of good voices. Um, it's part of um, part of I iOS. Um, you can just go to settings um, and accessibility and voiceover. It's kind of buried deep in the in, in the settings menu uh, on the on the iPhone or iPad. Um, but from there, you can download enhanced versions of of several very good voices. And again, it's a matter of just trying them, out, downloading them, and trying them out. Um, Larry, any, anything else before we go to Q and A? Uh, no, I think that's it. Um, there's some questions in there. Yeah. Um, so sh should I just go through go through them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first question: How do you import books from other sources than Bookshare? 
Um, so lots of ways to do it. Uh, you saw uh, importing from Google Drive. Um, you can also do it from Dropbox. Um, so those are those are easiest for the easiest ways to import documents. You can also import uh, using the iOS Files app. So any document that's uh, on the device yeah, can be accessed that way. Um, and finally, for web pages, the best way to do that is a, through a Safari uh, plugin, which is installed automatically when you install Voice Dream Reader. Uh, then you go to Safari, you see a web page you want to read, you can just just say share and save to voice stream and then it goes right into the library. Um, second question, can you please have a read out loud so I, I can decide whether I'd like to purchase it? Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, this, so that was the, the sample um, that, that, that we just heard. Um, but, but like I said, if you, um, you have a lot of choices in, in terms of voices and uh, I, um, I know it sounds strange, some people actually prefer uh, robotic sounding voices because, um, because they, uh, they believe that it's better for emotions and sort of the human quality of the text for them to come through to interpret that rather than having a text to speech voice that, that tries to be too human. Um, okay, uh, grateful for any voice from tips you can share for users of refreshable display devices. Um, so refreshable braille display de devices are basically connected to voiceover. So anything um, that voiceover on the screen, the voiceover has access to um, uh, refreshable display devices uh, can, can also do that. And there's really no, nothing extra that you have to do. Right? Other than the fact that if you start reading, if you keep going, say next and next and next, when you're in the text field, Voice stream recognizes you're using a refreshable braille display and keeps on advancing the page. So that's the only thing that voice stream sort of did specifically in order to make it work well for, uh, for, um, for braille displays. Okay, um, next. Are there any type of file that it won't read? Um, well, yeah, um, the, the biggest, um, the biggest category are Kindle, the Kindle uh, eBooks, and we do get this question a lot. Um, you know, Kindle books are are uh, encrypted um, using something called DRM, uh, D Digital Rights Management. Um, so, so those um, those books cannot be read into in, in, into Voice Stream Reader. Um, what else? Um, Pages, pages documents created on the Mac for some reason, it's got some issues. You, you know, my Apple actually changed the format at some point um, and, uh, and, and it became such that it was very, it's very hard to, to, uh, to reach in and grab the text content. Um, but, the, but the files it could read are PDF documents, right? Uh, in, including password protected PDF documents. And that's probably the, the, most, the most required file format. Then after that, Word documents, plain text documents. It does read audiobooks, DAISY formatted uh, audiobooks. Uh, it reads MP3s. Um, it reads RTF, which text format files. It reads HTML, of course, which is the, the, the format um, used uh, on the internet. Um, okay, uh, next one, how much is voice stream scanner? Um, I believe it's $5.99. Um, and also um, there is a, a, a nice package called voice stream suite, um, which comes with voice stream reader, voice stream scanner, and a voice stream writer. And for those of you in, in, uh, in assistive tech, you probably, you're probably familiar with co-writer. So voice stream writer is similar to co-writer in that it's a, it's a composition writing app with uh, text-to-speech built-in and, and text-to-speech proofreading built-in. And also two, ex two extra voices, two of our most popular voices. So those four, four, um, four apps are packaged together as a single suite uh, and it's sold at a sub substantial discount and also available in the app store. Um, question, does Voice Stream Reader offer same discount through App Store with at least 20 copies purchased? Um, in the, um, I, I believe you need to have a, 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 
a corporate or educate or a school account, an organizational account in order to uh, to get that discount. Um, and and I think that's fairly easy to to get on. Uh, Apple makes those tools available. Um, do you have training on how to access texts that are not standard books like skins and PDFs? Um, no, we don't have any training, but it's but like 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 I showed you in the demo, it's really fairly simple. Um, it's a, if it's a PDF document that's a scan, you can just load it into Voice Stream Reader, and you'll be prompted to to OCR it, and uh, and then that's really all you need to do. Um, next question: Can you show pictures? How? Pictures would appear from books downloaded from Bookshare or scanned in from Voicestream scanner. Um, okay, well, second question is easy. Um, well, if you see, if it's scanned in a PDF, it just shows the original PDF document. If it's got pictures, it'll, it'll show the pictures. So basically, it shows what whatever the PDF documents look like. Um, for Bookshare accounts, um, I, I should I should have shown this. Um, so this is how you manage different. Uh, content sources from which you can uh, download content into uh, your voice stream library. So for Bookshare, there's a settings button. Um, so here it shows you the uh, account that you have. And, and also it has a uh, switch that says prefer images. Now once that's turned on, then um, it will grab the version of the book from Bookshare that has images. And as, you, as you, some of you might know, when you download a book from Bookshare, you can download a plain text version of that book, um, which is a DAISY 3 format, or you can download a version of that um, that has images, which is either the EPUB format or the DAISY 3 with, with images. So when this is turned on, then we would download, we would download the EPUB version of that book if uh, it exists. Right, so some books don't add, actually don't have images. Um, so once you you're, once you you download it there, um, I don't I don't have an example of that here. Um, so once you once you download it, you you can go into this visual settings and select rich text. So rich text basically tries to preserve a lot of the as much of the content in the original document. Uh, so such as um, you know, in this case, you see font sizes, uh, and in the case of Bookshare books with images, it would it would preserve those images. So the image, so you you would be able to see the images that way. Um, next one for Android users, anything we need to know uh, if we can't use iOS, Mac, etc. Um, oh, um, the the Android app is um, uh, doesn't have some that. The features that you saw today, but most of it it does. Um, it's also less expensive. It's it's, it's ten dollars instead instead of fifteen. Um, the other thing is like the selection of voices on Android is a little bit less than uh, in iOS. However, uh, on Android, um, you can buy uh, third-party voices. That and install them as system voices. So, the, so those voices will be available uh, throughout the entire uh, OS. And in that case, VoiceStream will be able to take advantage of that, the fact that, that those voices exist. Um, but, but yes, and, and Android, um, other than that, nothing, uh, uh, nothing dramatically different between the Android version and, and the iOS version. Um, um, that's it. Um, oh, um, voice stream suite. Um, yeah, how much is that? I, sorry, sorry. I don't have the, 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 the price right, right off the top of my head. And I believe it was something like tw twin, just over $20. Um, I can find out quickly here. Um, It's twenty. It's twenty twenty two dollars, and and if you buy all the apps separately, it will be thirty three dollars. So uh, as I said, it's it's a substantial discount. Um, 
the the fifteen dollars is cost for the uh, for the app, and that's a perpetual app. With that, you can download as many books as you like. Um, um, so here's a question. Is there an educational discount on the voice stream suite? Unfortunately, no. And this is not our, um, this is, the, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, Apple at the moment does not allow um, education discounts on suites of apps. Um, so uh, I hope that'll change soon. Um, but right now it's, um, you know, it's still, still a pretty good deal. Yeah, great questions, everybody. And you will be receiving an email in the next few days with a, um, a copy, a link to the recording, and also uh, the slides that were shown at the beginning. So be on the lookout for that. Um, if there's, and you'll also have our email addresses if you have any further questions. Um, but it doesn't look like there's any more questions right now. So just would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And we hope the school year is going well. We know it's uh, interesting times and we are here to support you with your, uh, with your reading needs for your students who need um, books in alternative formats. So thank you once again for joining. Have a great Thanks. day.